Looks like we are live now. So welcome, um, everybody who shows up here. I appreciate your support. I want to first give everybody a few minutes to log in. So I'll just kind of talk briefly about what's the motivation behind this and what the expectations are that you can get within the next uh, probably 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> is my guess. We'll see if things break or not on the on the way to making this site go live. So I do expect if you're trying to follow along, I will be going pretty fast because I'm also going to record this. In fact, I didn't hit record yet. Let me try that. <laughs> there we go. So I'm recording now and I'm on I'm on live on YouTube. So I expect you to have at least R installed already and then R Studio, which I think most people that are in this chat will because I posted only a couple places where it's R related. But uh, so, yeah, have R and R Studio already installed. And then finally, we're going to install a couple of things. I actually uninstalled a few things so I can actually walk through that process to kind of make it as real as possible. I do think that because everyone's going to have different speeds of their computers and different speeds of just navigating to where they're supposed to go, I'm going to be ahead of you probably on most of this. So you can try to follow along, but I probably will skip some steps. Like I've already got a GitHub account, so I don't have to sign up. You, you might have to. I already have a Netlify account, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get into that here in just a few minutes. I want to give um, just another moment or two before we begin just so that if anybody really wanted to be here for the live session, they can be here. So we'll give it another two or three minutes and we'll go from there. But oh, what I have here is the book that, that uh, I believe you pronounce a Yi Hoi Ji. He created this book called Creating Websites with R Markdown and that was the motivation for the video tutorials that some of you have already seen that I did. Um, so I skimmed through it fast because I've done this a couple years ago, like in 2016, late 2016, maybe things have changed of course, but, and it's been a while. So I zoomed through this book pretty fast and that's where the motivation came from. So I wanted to give credit where credit's due and that's right here. And I would definitely here, let me see if I can give you the URL for this a little bit bigger. There we go. In fact, I'm just getting set up here to make sure that the stream goes as smooth as possible. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I don't know how often I'll be looking back at the actual uh, chat, but I'll try. If, if I get, if my attention goes that way, I'll try to answer them. I, you know, the scope of this is going to be creating a R project that's going to have the blog down package installed with Hugo as a theme. And we're gonna push that to GitHub and we are going to have Netlify pull from GitHub as GitHub changes and actually host the site live where anybody can go to it. The only caveat is, you know, you don't have your own domain name like cradle to grave r.com. So we'll have to use a Netlify, uh, you know, domain. Like it'll be myproject.netlify something, right? All right, so we have uh, a couple people here now. I think we will get started here in just a few more moments. I want to make sure that uh, if somebody truly did want to try to follow along as best they could, um, they can do it live. But again, all of these live videos will be, uh, st they'll stay on YouTube. I'm not going to delete them. But what I will probably do is condense them and create an edited version that you can always reflect back on. But this this should be a really easy process. It took uh, a couple of tries for me because, you know, the first time for anything is always the hardest. So I'm hoping that this live video goes smooth um, the first time around, but if I run into trouble, maybe you guys can help me out with the chat. Maybe we give up. I don't know, but I don't think we'll have any trouble. So that being said, how about we start in about one minute when it's 3.50 and I'll try to walk you through end to end. And again, uh, have R and R studio already installed if you want to try to keep up. Uh, again, I, I don't think you'll keep up completely, but maybe you can get a good start on it and refer back to the video and the book. The book that's showing up in your screen right now is a really easy book to read. Now, the videos that I put together might go through a little bit more detail. You know, all these little nuances that happen along the way, it'll drive you nuts. Uh, some, of the, some of the problems I had 
took me like two hours to fix and it was just like the stupidest thing, right? So hopefully I can walk you through all that and you don't have to worry about it. I've only done this uh, once recently doing those tutorials and now I think in my head, oh, I can do this end to end and show everybody live. We'll see. I'm a little nervous, but we'll get through it. Worst case scenario is it doesn't work and we try it again. But all right, it's 3.50, so I am going to get started. I will probably uh, check back on the chat here and there if you guys have questions or compliments or any criticisms, whatever you have, go ahead and let me know. So that being said, again, let's start this thing. I'll show you my intro. My This is what I love showing is my intro. Here it is, maybe. Yeah, so that's my... Uh, that's my original, there we go. <laughs> that's my original intro for my markgingrass.com site. That's basically the R site now. Uh, I use OBS, online broadcast system, to um, record all of my videos. And so in that other channel, I actually teach how to use OBS to do stuff like this. All right, here we go. Blog down. So we started this with blog down book by uh, Yi Hoi Ji, and it's a really excellent book. It's a quick read. You can follow this and probably get to the same point. Um, so that's where I began. So let's begin our journey with our, our studio. So everybody should have our studio. We're going to create a brand new project. Actually, excuse me. We're going to start with GitHub. Let's start with GitHub because we're going to skip a lot of the fluff and just get right to it. So go to github.com. And da, 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 right for me, it would be, I think, already up. I've got so many sites up. Here we go. So github.com, and I will show my URL a little bit bigger there. So github.com, if you haven't signed up, it's real simple. You would just put in a username, email, and password um, and sign up. You'll probably be able to sign up with like LinkedIn or something else maybe, and it'll be a quick process. But note that this username will probably be like your resume. So try to not make it ridiculous sounding or hard to get to. If you're actually trying to get a data science job or a programming job or anything and they can't get to your GitHub account because it's a weird spelling or it's got too many weird stuff in there, uh, not good. Um, so just try to make it as professional as possible. Now, of course, I've already got a GitHub account, so I'm going to sign right in. I've got my username. Take note of your username and the email address you use for this process because you'll need it again later. All right, I signed in and you should get a sort of something like this that pops up. You know, it might be a slightly different home screen. It could be, uh, yeah, so this is my home screen apparently. But what you notice, I'm, I'm practicing my zoom in with OBS too. What you notice is that up here on the left hand side, I have this new button, so new repository. I wanna be able to place all of my code from R and R Studio to this repository. And so Git is a version control uh, website where you can pu push and pull soft, uh, code back and forth. And as you do that, it keeps track of every version. You can have collaborations. You can branch off of your code to create a whole new project. It's really fantastic. So click on new, and we're going to create a project. There we go. Uh, notice my owner is called MT Gingrass. That's the name that I used for my GitHub. It's uh, my GitHub username. I'm going to call this Cradle to Grave R. Everybody should probably kind of know what that means now. End to end process. I like the end to end. So Cradle to Grave, show me everything. All right, there we go. We have my username and my repository name. Now that's important, but I'll show you why in a second. All right, so the free version, you have to have public. So if you have errors or mistakes and you don't want them to be shown or you want to practice something, you know, it's it's all public. Uh, if you do private, you have to pay for that service, which by all means, go for it if you want to. Initialize this repository with a readme. If, if, um, if you ever see anybody's GitHub account, they all have a readme and it kind of describes, all right, here's how you can possibly, you know, clone my... Not clone, it's not really how to clone it, but what is my project all about, right? So I'm going to create that repository very simply by clicking that button. And now, now you see I'm at a new site here, and over to the right, I have this clone or download button. We're going to click on clone or download, and there's a URL here that's been created. I'm just going to copy that. And once you copy that, let's go to our studio. 
which I don't have open yet. Oh yeah, I do, right here. So don't worry about any of this. We're gonna do file, new project. Instead of doing new directory like we would normally do in most of our projects, we're gonna go to version control. Ah, excuse me, I'm skipping a step already. Before we do that, before we do that, <laughs> we have to download Git. So let's go back here. I have this site for people with Windows called Git for Windows, gitforwindows.org. You want to go to that site, or if you have a Mac, I don't. I haven't done this process with a Mac, but I'm sure it's very similar. The website is git-scm.com slash download. You should be able to find it. It's just Git. Um, there's various ways to install things in Mac that are uh, through like the homebrew or brew or versus other means, you know, just downloading the uh, installers and whatnot, the DMG files, whatever they are. I hope that you can follow along with the Git for Mac. It'll be a similar process, but probably slightly different. All right. So I have to do this because I actually uninstalled this. So let's do this. And I wanted to do that uh, just to show you more of the process. So I have a fast machine and fast internet. So here we go. I will see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. All right, so here's the GNU General Public License Agreement. Um, you should probably familiar, familiarize yourself with some of those because uh, if you're dealing with software and programming, um, though that agreement is pretty common. All right, so I'm, I'm just gonna install it in the uh, installation directory that they recommend. Uh, it already exists. Would you like to install to that folder anyways? Sure. So I guess when I installed it, it probably kept my settings. You know how that works. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, I'm just going to override it. Now these are all defaulted. I'm not going to change any of those. And I am going to continue with this default setting. And now here, this would be um, the default editor used by Git. I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to be using RStudio. And they're going to do most of the work for us. All right, now this is probably the most important setting that you want to make sure you select the correct uh, option. Get from the command line and also from third-party software. Now, third-party software, meaning our studio is going to do some of the work for us using Git as the back end. That's exactly what you want, okay? So that's the most important takeaway from downloading Git. I actually have to install it. Um, I'm going to continue using the defaults. Continue, continue, there's a lot of options here. A lot of chances to mess up, that's for sure. <laughs> but as you can see, I have actually used the default for absolutely everything and I just wanted you to focus on that one option that um, that was crucial. But of course, that even that option was defaulted for me, so good to go. All right, so I'm not gonna view the readme notes, I just wanted to install it. And it doesn't ask me to restart my computer or anything, so hopefully you guys are in the same boat and you're fine. So, Git has been installed. Now, I have my RStudio already open, right? Um, that might be a problem, so let's close it out completely and reopen it. Because we installed Git, we want RStudio to recognize that it's been installed and it will automatically do some connections for us. So, close that out completely. Uh, maybe, if I clicked it, yeah. And let's see, let's see how many people we have. We have four concurrent users. Hey, I'm building up a little community here. <laughs> I love it. It is fun. Uh, this is becoming more fun as you guys get more involved, by the way. I, and the trick is to not BS anybody with anything. If I don't know something, I don't know it. I'm not a statistician, right? I like to use practical R, like R to make my life easier. You know, uh, that's what I use it for currently. And so hopefully I'm gonna make your life easier by building this site. All right, so we've restarted it. You could see already that, uh, 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 lost myself. Okay, so I'm in the way, I'm gonna jump out of the way here. And under uh, this tab here, I have Git. You might not have that because you might not have a project open, but I wanted to show you that that's what we're gonna be looking for is that Git. And then also under um, build, no, not build. No, that's it for now. So we, we're gonna do, File, new project, and I don't care about cha the changes. Normally, again, we would go to new directory and keep our stuff clean and tidy in a nice little spot. This time, we're going to go to version control. Version control, and now we have Git here. If you didn't install Git, you probably still have this option, but when you click on it, you won't get to this screen here. And this is where it's important to... Uh, those are my shortcut keys that I can't help but 
use. All right, so you wanna do a control V or a command V on this, and that'll be your URL that you were just at for the GitHub page right here, what you cloned. I know you can't see the whole thing, but that's what we're looking at. Now, you notice that the project directory name automatically filled in. It's either because it grabbed it from, most likely it's because it's just part of the name and they know that the cradle to grave R dot get is the name to use. But it might have actually checked the website. You know, I have no idea. Pro probably not because we didn't connect it yet. Anyways, create project. I'm going off on a tangent. Oh, it already exists. <laughs> well, excuse me. Yours probably doesn't exist. So let me delete that project first real quick. So I've done this in the past and I have it. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly delete that folder. In fact, I'm gonna close out my R again. I uh, probably didn't need to do that, but. All right, so what, what did I say? Under site test, cradle to grave R, delete, gone. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Let's do this again. Well, this is one way you can catch up is if I keep making mistakes, if I keep making mistakes, you can catch up maybe, unless you make the same mistakes. All right, new project, version control, git, control V, cradle to grave R, site test. I could have easily just put it into a different directory, but I, I didn't. Anyways, create project. Now, it's gonna be an empty project with that readme file because we started this process, remember, on GitHub. Before we did any code in anything, we literally went to GitHub, created a repository. We know where we're gonna store this. It's nice because you'll be able to you know, go to work, go somewhere else, go down the street and just pull that same repository and you'd be in the same exact place. As long as you continue to use Git as your, your place to uh, hold your code and version control it. All right, that's it. I've got nothing here. Uh, it's an empty project. There's nothing there, but I, you should have this Git um, um, tab. You should have that right now. If you don't, then something's off. And I'm sorry I can't... Uh, Fix your problems probably on the fly, but at this point you should have that Git tab. All right, so what's next? Install a package. We are going to click on, oh, you can't see it because I'm in the way. The beauty of live is I can make these changes on the fly. There we go. I'm a little bit smaller now. Okay, so click on packages, which is right here. We're gonna install, and we're gonna install the blog down package. Um, you also might need to install DevTools. So you could, it, it could ask you to install DevTools, D-E-V-T-O-O-L-S. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now, but you might have to. So let's try blog down, and I've already, I didn't uninstall these packages, so that's why I can't test uh, to see if I needed DevTools or not. So my blog down, it says successfully unpacked and MD5 some checked. Um, if that's the case for you, good. If it asks you for uh, dev tools, go ahead and install that and then install blog down. So that's installed, good to go. Now let's install the Hugo themes. So blog down, colon, colon, install Hugo. That's what we wanna do. So everybody can see that, I hope. You install the Hugo and hit enter. And here is where it's gonna uh, make it so that we can use the Hugo theme set for building websites. Hopefully you have a good uh, setup right now where it's all still working. Um, notice this version right here, that's gonna come back later. I'll show you how to get that again anyways, but the latest Hugo version is 0 0.72.0. The entire thing matters, so there's that. Got that Hugo installed, we're good to go. Next step, next step. Let's see if I can remember all these next steps. The next step would be to actually create a, um, a site using Blogdown. But before we do that, let's check out a website here called Hugo Themes. So I'm gonna show you this URL, themes.gohugo.io forward slash tags forward slash blog. I'm sure you can get to it either way. Uh, I just happened to click on blog. That's why it's there. You could do just themes.gohugo.io and you'll get here. I clicked on blog as a, there we go. I clicked on blog right here to get me to this page and I'm gonna choose, and I have not tested this one out yet. I just looked at it and I said, oh, that looks pretty simple to use. 
I'm gonna choose this one here called M10C. Uh, let's see if you can get it a little bit better. M10C, so click on that. And this is how it's gonna work for all of your Hugo themes. So you can pick all of these different themes and it's just gonna work, hopefully. So here we are, we are I've clicked on the theme of my choice. Now I wanna click on home page. You can click on the demo and see what it's like first. In fact, let's do that real quick. So here's what it looks like. It's pretty basic. It looks like um, it's got, uh, you can put a picture there, a little title, a couple of links to GitHub or Twitter. I'm sure there's actually options for Facebook and other things as well we'll figure out. Um, but then you have your blog posts here. And if you click on one, it's working. It's probably got some code. It's probably got some math in there somewhere. That's not important right now, but what's important is that you actually can find this on GitHub and that it's maintained, right? So every every single theme is not treated equally. Uh, look for when it's updated, updated uh, 2027. So it's probably actively being updated, which is great. That's good to know. All right, so we're gonna go to homepage, like I said, and you can see now this is a GitHub site, just like the one you just created, except this one's got the actual um, theme here. What you want to take notice is the username and the uh, theme name or the repository name. So we're gonna we're gonna copy that. We're gonna copy that whole thing here. Control C or Command C, maybe if you can get it. Okay, so that's what we needed. So now we go back to our studio. If I could find it, there we go. I'm gonna see if anybody. Uh, oh, no worries, I'm coming late. This is all um, gonna be recorded and sent back on YouTube. You'll be able to catch up. All right, so the next step is, boom, boom, boom. What was my next step? We installed Hugo, now we need to actually create a blog. Okay, so blog down, and every once in a while I gotta check to make sure I'm still recording, and I don't like the way that I look right now with my camera. That's not cool because I, oh, there, now you can see like my head a little bit. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry, slight distraction, guys. I, uh, I'm a little bit weirded out the way that my head is. That's weird. I'm weirded out. <sighs> Let me try something here. Oh, well, leaving it. <laughs> All right, blog down, colon, colon. And then we're gonna do, oh, build site. No, site, new site, new site. Always difficult. Theme equals, right? And in quotes or single quotes, that's where we're gonna paste that guy's, uh, the author of the site and the theme name, whoa. So I did control V on that and added a couple extra spaces or indentations and return char characters. So I deleted all that. So now we're down to just what we need. That should do it. We'll see. Let's double check by hitting enter and just see what, see what we get. Um, argument one matches multiple formal arguments. Oh, what does that even mean? I, and I don't think single quote versus double quote matters. This is where argument one matches multiple formal arguments. Oh, I think it's supposed to be a dash. I am sorry. Boom, boom, dash. These are the little things. Oops, spoke too soon. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <clears throat> oh, it's definitely not a dash. Going back to the site here, hold up. Vaga, da, 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 da. Just, for, just for my sanity, I think I might pick a different one just to see if it's me or something else that's causing this. It shouldn't be though. Like the one that worked last time was the academic site and I really wanted to show you a different one. Um, academic? Nope, can't look at it that way. You know, that should work. Let's troubleshoot this some more. Sorry, guys. Uh, new site. Oh, theme is spelled wrong. Guys, come on. Where's my chat? Where's my help in the chat room for that? <laughs> Just kidding. So I did theme spelled incorrectly, and that was probably the problem. So it probably isn't that dash, and it's the forward slash like I originally thought. All right, we're going to press enter on that, and hopefully you guys see what I just fixed. 
and it's starting to download what I need to download and create the uh, site. So give it a few seconds. <sighs> there we go. Here we go. Everything's looking good now, finally. That was a little scary for a second, going live and messing up big time. All right, so we have a site here, and you can kind of mess with it in this viewer here. You can click on things. You can actually uh, check the website too. So again, if you guys are all here, see that static or that uh, IP address? It's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address. You can control C on that, open up your browser, and paste it in there if you want to test it out that way. Right, so here it is. This is local on my computer from R, the same exact site, and the links should work. Everything working good. You can click the uh, back button or do that. Um, I think uh, template primer. I haven't checked all this stuff out, but working pretty good. So that's a good test run. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to R Studio, and um, what I want to mention to you is a couple of things. Um, the site isn't built. This is all being basically run through our studio right now in order to generate that site IP address and to make it look like the site's built. It technically is not built and it will not work, right? So you need to build the site before it works. However, you can do that for sure and make it work locally on your computer. Uh, right now, it only works locally on my computer through our studio. If I closed our studio and found the folders, that it's created, it's not going to work correctly. So just know that when I go to the public folder, which is right here, don't mess with it right now because it, it'll haunt you. Um, and probably never mess with public, honestly, because um, you want to build everything through our studio. And when our studio does its thing, it's going to build it and put all the files necessary in the public folder. Then let the public folder uh, be used on the server that it's run, which will be Netlify for us. That being said, we are going to stop the server just in case it has anything to do with um, what we're doing. <laughs> so I don't want it to interrupt anything we're doing. So I'm going to copy the serve R, control C on that, and I'm going to paste it over here. So it's basically going to stop the server. And I've got that number one in there as the parameter that says, you know, kill, exit, right? And we did not build the site. Keep that on in your mind. All right, we stopped the server. So now if you go back to that actual IP address, it won't work. Right, it's still here over here in our viewer, but it's not going to be hosted on the actual site right here. Okay, so now next step, we've got a site. We saw that it works. Now we didn't change anything. If you want to change something like, uh, you know, hello R Markdown, feel free. Don't mess up too much until you kind of get used to it. But uh, let me show you a couple things next. We've built. We've downloaded Git. We've created a Git repository. We've created a blog down site with a Hugo theme. We've shown that it works. We did not build it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stage everything that was created in this process to eventually commit to GitHub. So that's what we're doing next. All right, now one caveat. Um, if you stage that public folder from our studio, oh, you can't even see it. There we go. Wow, that helps. Here. I'm down here now. Uh, if you stage public, if you click on that little checkbox, you're probably going to crash your system. So I really hope nobody's done that yet, and just don't click it right now. Uh, you could try it out all you want on your own, but right now I'm not going to do it. What you can do, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stage everything. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go to Tools, Shell, and in here, hopefully I can get you a little bit closer. Yeah, I could do that. And in here, you should see that you're already in that project directory. So that's the beauty of going through our studio is it puts you in the right directory. We want to do a couple of things. First thing, if you guys just downloaded Git, we have to set up your Git. So while we're here, let's do that. So before we do anything, we're going to do uh, Git space config space dash dash. I'm reading this uh, global. My mouse was in my global space user dot name space in quotes um, the first name last name no 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 username is exactly what you set up in your GitLab uh, Git pages GitHub pages 
GitHub. Those are all actually three different things, so I gotta be careful. So in your GitHub, whatever username you have, which mine was my name basically, MT Gingrass. So set that up, that's important. Hit enter, hit the up key to repeat that. Instead of username, we're gonna put in user email, and then we'll put in your actual email address here that you use for GitHub. So I'm gonna use the exact one. Boom, there we go. I'm gonna hit enter on that. And once you set that up, then we can do what I was about to do. And that is, you wanna add, I'm gonna stage everything. The reason why I'm doing it through the shell the first time is because when you stage a lot of files at once in our studio, it sometimes crashes. So I'm gonna do it this way the first time. I'll show you again later that we're not, not gonna do this ever again, <laughs> including the uh, username and email. You'll, you won't need to do that again. All right, so first we're gonna do git space add space dash capital A. It's just gonna add everything. Probably not good practice for the long run, but for now, let's do that. And you can see it did a bunch of stuff, a bunch of warnings. The warnings have nothing to do with what we're doing, so I'm gonna X that out. Now you're gonna see RStudio catch up. Let me see if I'm still with everybody. A couple of people on. So now when I go back to our studio, interesting i see a big black box i will fix that i will fix that right now before it gets too crazy sorry in fact what i'll do is i'll delete that little black box maybe just a moment, guys. I got to fix something on the uh, recording. It's always something. Can never get it right. So there's a shortcut key I'm missing that didn't go with one of my things. I think... Yeah, good for now. We're back. We're back. We're back. I believe. We are not back. I'm deleting that thing. Neutral... Delete. I hope that works and then everything else is fine. All right, all right, we're good. I'm sorry, guys. Got distracted. All right, so they're all staged. <laughs> they're all staged. Let's click on, oh, geez. I don't need that up there either. Let's click on commit. And you'll see everything is still checked off here. We're going to say first commit. This message is used so that when you do the version control, you can always go back and see when you committed something, what were the changes. So if you made like a change, you can kind of describe what you did so that you can always come back and version control it later. So I'm going to click on commit. It's going to do its thing. When you get this close button, you're good to go. And then finally, you want to push, push. So stage, commit, push. I'm pushing to GitHub now. That's the final answer, push. So that one might take a few seconds because uh, the first time there's a lot of data that's never been in there. Remember, we started with an empty empty repository except for the readme file. But anyways, the close button's available. I'm gonna click it, hit the X. Just to show you, I'll go to my GitHub account and this is what it looked like before, cradle to grave R. I'm gonna refresh that. And now you see all those files here, including the public folder, which we never built the website. Just keep that in mind because I'm, I made a mistake before. And Okay, so we've done that. We've done that. Now, the next step, this is just literally holding our stuff, our files for us. Now let's go to Netlify. So new site, Netlify, www.netlify.com. And again, you have to sign up if you didn't already, it's free. And you'll probably be able to use your GitHub account to actually sign up with it. So please do that and catch up uh, with me after. I'm gonna log in because I already have an account. Ooh, I think. I guess I'll click on GitHub. This should be a similar process and very simple uh, for you guys as well. Once you sign up, so you've done the GitHub, you've already signed up and you sign up for this, You'll be able to connect to your GitHub. It's gonna ask you for permissions probably the first time. It didn't ask me, but it probably asks you, do I have permission to look at your GitHub account? And the answer is yes, if you wanna do this project. New site from Git, just like that. I'm gonna click on it. 
and uh, continuous deployment, Git, GitLab, or Bitbucket. I'm going to click on GitLab, GitHub. This is how simple it is. And again, most of these steps are the one time only. Now every update you make will be simple. You're going to be able to update your blog every single day, no problem. It lists all of my projects. I wanted to uh, have it host Cradle to Grave R, so I click on that. And um, there's some settings here. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. These are important. All right, so I'm, I'm fine with the owner. I'm fine with branch to deploy. Down here in basic build settings, make sure you have the build command set as Hugo and the publish directory as public. So that public is basically where um, it's going to publish everything live and it's the first go-to place. And then you want to click on show advanced. And when you do show advanced, you should get this new variable here. It's an environment variable. We need to set that up. We need to set up uh, at least one variable, <laughs> I hope. Click on new variable and we're gonna type in capitals, Hugo version, all caps, it matters. And the value, that's that point, that's at 0 0.72.0. And where do I get that from? Let's go back to our studio real quick. And let's just type in uh, blog down, Hugo underscore version right there this is pretty important so now it shows you 0 0.72.0 so let's type that in in our little netlify here 0 0.72.0 and that lead in zero does matter put that in all right so that's it i'm going to deploy site and see what happens it's not quite over yet we're almost there i mean we're pretty much there right now but um, i'm going to click on this right now so i can see what's going on I, I didn't have to click on it, but I want to show you that it's deploying the site right now, doing all of these commands, and it's building our site for us. We didn't build it in our studio. We didn't need to. We never need to. You can serve the site in our studio so you can see if it's good and if it's good, push it to Git, which Netlify will go check Git and see if anything's changed. If it's changed, it's going to update the site for you. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. That's how it's going to be set by default. It's going to check every X amount of minutes to see if anything's ever changed. You can also manually click the retry button or the deploy button. Finished process and build request in 34 seconds. I feel like it was even shorter than that. That's it, right? So now we can click on preview or, yeah, let's click on preview. Ooh, that's not good. It did not work right. <laughs> so that, I mean, it's live, but it's not right. If I click on something, example domain, domain interesting bad deal there what did we do wrong uh first i'm going to see if there's any errors in here which i don't think no config file i knew that site is live uh, i gotta put my thinking cap on for this so we deployed it let's look at deploy settings again um, we have, I know we created that environment variable called Hugo version, but I want to say there might be another, no, there might be something else in the deploy status. We might build the site in our studio and try it again. So we can do that and see if that's the trick. Let's try it. Let's try it. That might be the problem. So this will show you also the continuous integration, continuous deployment as well. So I'm back in our studio. Let me um, put myself up here again. I swear my camera is either shifting downward or something. Let's build a site. We never built it, so let's build it. Let's do blog down, colon, colon, build site, and that's it. Uh, I tried it earlier, and I used build site, and it worked fine. But there's also a Hugo build, so I'd be careful with which one you pick. I'm using build site. I'm going to hit enter. As you can see, up here, I've just generated a bunch of modified files in my public area. Um, I'm going to push all of those to GitHub in just a moment. Let me jump down here. Again, I don't want to risk crashing right now, but you could select them all individually. There's probably plenty of ways to do it. I'm going to go to, 
And as you can see, they're all public. Um, nothing's changed anywhere else. I haven't done any changes to the code. Uh, the only thing I've done was build the site, which generates all the files necessary in the public. I thought that the, the um, Netlify was going to do that, and maybe there is a way, and it's we've got some sort of setting wrong. But let's try this and see if it fixes our site. Um, so I don't need to save anything, but what I want to do is go to Shell, the, I mean Tools, Shell, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the git space add space dash. I could do A. Uh, I'm just going to do the word public forward slash star. That means everything in the public folder. Nothing else changed. There's no point in adding stuff that didn't change. Hit enter, and I think we should be good to go. Let's jump back into our studio, and you can see they've all been checked. Click on commit. Click on, uh, or let's type in built site for the first time using um, build underscore site. That way we kind of know, not, that, not like we're going to go back to it. All right, so it's been committed. I'm going to push it to GitHub. And once it pushes to GitHub, Netlify should see and recognize that it's changed and start the deployment process for us. Let's go check. Maybe we can catch it in action. <laughs> Maybe. So we're here. We're going to go to uh, deploys. And you could see right now it says building. It already is building our site, right? Now, whether it's going to work or not, that's another story. I'm going to click on it and follow the commands just for fun, just to see that it's still working. You'll get some failures in here probably here and there, uh, and you have to figure out why. But it, it is helpful to have this here so you can copy and paste it and say, hey, why am I getting this failure, and try to get some answers. Uh, but it says site is live. Let's try it again. Let's hope that fixed our problem, and it did not. That's not cool. All right, well, where are we at? Where are we at? Good thought, though, huh? So that did not fix our problem. Well, you guys are in a live troubleshooting uh, session now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to my deploys for another, let's see, uh, my deploys. I think I have, oh, let me go all the way back. My project one test was working. So I'm gonna click on that one and see what kind of settings I might have that might be different. I've got, and sadly, it could be the theme itself that's causing the issue, I don't know. But it worked fine in our studio, so I don't think so. Okay, so we have, all right, build and deploy settings. Deploy key, no, environment. Hugo underscore version 0 0.72.0. Everything seemed to build build fine though. That's the problem I'm having. Right? I mean, it didn't give us any errors whatsoever. Environment analytics. Huh. I don't know. Going back to this one, let's click on site settings again and double check. We've got everything correct. Um, I'm looking at build and deploy, public, Hugo public. So that seems to be correct. Zero point seven two point zero Hugo version. Let's check GitHub. Make sure that public folder. I'm sure it's there. Uh, so there's a public folder there. Three minutes ago, it should be fine. Go back to our studio. Everything works here. There might be a build local. Local equals true, maybe. Local equals false. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try one more thing. And if this doesn't work, we'll have to come back and do this live thing again. We're close, though. We're close. You guys got a lot pretty far. Uh, there's a couple other things I want to show you before I call it quits anyways. Is uh, First, let's try this build one more time. Blog down, build site. And then I'm going to put, I think, local equals. I think local equals false is the default. It is the default. So that's what I was going to put. Local equals false. 
that's not going to fix it because that was the default, so that's what we did. Let's see. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Anybody have any suggestions on the chat? <laughs> While I'm thinking about that, let me show you another thing in Netlify. When you do get it working, maybe it's perhaps the theme, I don't know, but it worked with the other project of mine. So it could be the theme itself. I don't want to put blame on the theme though. I don't. I bet you it's anything, it's user error for sure. All right, so one thing that you want to do is check your domain settings as well. So let me go back to the overview tab here and you see the domain settings. Click on domain settings and you, you can um, create your own domain or subdomain and click on options, edit site name, and now you can put a more user friendly site name on there. So I will call this I don't want to call it cradle to grave R because I, I don't want to accidentally never be able to use that again. So I'll put a little one in there. So I'm going to hit save on that. And then that's our website. So cradle to graver onenetlify.app app. So I click on that. Again, something's wrong with our links and I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. Every link is broken. So there's a key. Every single link is broken. Let's do a quick Google. Um, Hugo site net net Lefe. Every link broken. What am I doing wrong? Let's see. Solved. Solved. Hi. Hugo environment equals production. Hugo version, Hugo underscore environment. I didn't use an environment variable last time. Double check one more here. Published, failed, failed. In the example below, the published directory is dist. Published directory. We have public for hours. So let's go back to Netlify real quick. We did have public, I'm certain. So overview, site settings. Site details, create of the graver one, build and deploy, Hugo lowercase, public lowercase. Let's just go and double check. Yep, Hugo public, base directory. Nope, that should do it. That should be fine. And we have our environment variable here as Hugo version, V E R S I O N, right? <laughs> That's how you spell version. And it, it actually doesn't give us an error. So it deploys. It says published. I'm going to click on it again and read through this one more time. Well, I'm going to try one more thing and then that's it. And then if it's not, then we'll call it quits and try again. Maybe try a different theme. All right, so I'm going to do clear cache and deploy site one more time. Everything worked up until the end though, so I'm pretty happy about that. I just didn't want to waste a whole lot of time not having the solution for you. But considering you know it's live, you never know what you're going to get. I do hope that uh, people can get value out of this as well you know, as much as they can up until this point. Soon though, because I in my tutorial I show how to do this and it works fine. So what's probably gonna happen is someone's gonna look at the last tutorial and say, here's what you did different and hopefully solve the problem. <laughs> so I'm gonna click refresh here just to see if it changes. So it says published. I'm gonna click on it and click on preview again. And no go, no go, no go. What we could do is probably Google that exact theme, whatever it was called. Um, Let's go to our studio and check. It bothers me a little bit that we couldn't get it completely working. 
What do we do for a theme? Oh, I'm lost here too. Blog down, download the blog down, crib the gray bar. Our theme should say it somewhere around here. Live streaming. Let's see. Hugo themes. What did we use for a theme? I forget the name of the theme, guys. Not a big deal. Like I said, I think we've covered everything up to that point, and it, it, it's at least live, but it's not looking correct. And I know... I know there's some issues. What? How do we fix that issue? Blog down build site. Hugo version. Demon stop. This is where that book's going to come in handy. <laughs> Theme Vaga Hugo theme. I'm just going to double check if maybe other people are having issues with this particular theme. I kind of doubt it. I, I do think it's user error. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot of people having this problem. So I think we will still call this one quits and try it again. I'd like to try it again and be a little bit more streamlined with this. What other build could we do? All right, let's go to that book. I'll show you that book that I was reading to get all this information. That was the, uh, where is it at? Right here. So on the left-hand side, we can easily just scroll down to deployment, Netlify, and this gives us some instructions. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me. See if I can do a shortcut to get it closer. Not quite. I'm in the way as well. All right, there we go. Let me just zoom in that way. Branch master, build command, Hugo, publish directory, public, Hugo version, and that's it. That should be it. All right, maybe it's not the deployment. It is... Configuration, static sites in Hugo. Oh. Relative URLs equals true. Let's try this one last thing. All right, so what I didn't show you before was the files here. Over here you see the files, and I have a config.toml file. It's a, I don't know what, it's another markdown language. But inside of here you have a bunch of parameters that you can set to change like your GitHub and your Twitters and add things and subtract things. and You know, there's all kinds of stuff in here. We can add a parameter here called relative URLs equals true. I wonder if that's our problem. So I'm going to control S. Hope you guys are still following me along on this one. Control S. You see that my config.toml file showed up over here. So now I'm going to show you that you can just click it to stage it and it should be fine. So click it, staged, commit. I'm going to say um, changed relative URLs to true. I think this is our problem. I am sorry that it took so long to get there and I'm already putting the cart before the horse by saying it's fixing it, but who knows. Uh, did, I, did I push it? <laughs> yeah, push it again. Cool, everything's up to date. Uh, just a little side note as well. Uh, when you open up our studio tomorrow, the next day, and you start making changes to this particular code, before you even do any of that, 
click this little down arrow and that's pulling the latest version from GitHub. Otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna run into problems like uh, because it's not gonna be synced up and you'll have to Google how to fix that because it's a Git thing and it's purposely done to you know, not make you screw things up. But it will kinda uh, set you up, set you back a little bit because you'll have to Google how to do it. Anyway, so we did that. Let's go back to our Netlify and see if that fixed the problem. Um, I'll, I'll click refresh. No go on the refresh. Close that. Go back here. I'm going to do that whole um, delete the deploy and, or the cache and do it again. So we have the latest one. Trigger deploy, clear cache, and deploy site. Last try, then I'm calling it quits. We were so close, and anybody that's still sticking with me now to this point, troubleshooting this very last bit, I appreciate it, but I will probably have to do this one more time in the future and make sure I get it streamlined enough that I can just zip right through it, maybe 35 minutes. It says live, let's preview it, and no go. Sorry guys, I failed you on the very last part, but you do have up to there to work with, and I hope that you come back, let's see, what is that? Site, Cradle to Grave Bar, Netlify. Yep, no go, no go, let's go back to me. I tried and I failed. Um, hopefully I can edit this down and use most of it, but if not, I'm not worried about it because I feel like, I feel like because of that mistake at the end, I should have tested out this theme beforehand, is key. Um, so we'll do this again in a couple of days. Hopefully I'll get some more people that are interested and go from there. So <laughs> sorry once again, uh, you saw some live troubleshooting that did not work for the very ending, but I will see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Bye.